Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another episode of Brick Mania TV. Hey, welcome back. Today, Cody is joining me with his all-new T72A. A. A. Yeah, it's a. a model. Cool. Yeah, a. Are you saying I'm Canadian? I'm not saying So, anything. Cody has an all-new tank model, <laughs> and it is Russian. It is. Right? It is a Russian tank model. Cool. Cold War era. Yep. Yeah, so we're continuing on with our Cold War MBT theme, main battle tank theme. Mm -hmm. So, we had the main battle tank theme starting last year, 2018. Now, we've continued on, but regressed it a little bit back in time. Cold War, because Cold War tanks are cool. Mm -hmm. And that was a really awesome time to see all the arms race. I mean, yeah. maybe not an awesome time for the Cold War sake, but just for all the models, all the, the arms know, race. I get what you're saying. You get a lot of cool vehicles yes, that come out of that. Like the infamous T-72. Uh, as you said, it's the bad guy tank. Yeah, I think that was you guys, you said You said that, that. you told me. Bad guy you don't want to be uh, associated with calling it a bad guy you tank. You do see this in... Um, <laughs> so it's, it, you see it a lot in cinema. Mm -hmm. It's a bad guy Absolutely. tank in cinema. It's the bad guy tank in um, video games. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's a very popular tank, and it's been used widely. It's still used today. More than just the different Russians. Different variants, yeah. All more than, over more the than just Russians. It, it's like the AK-47 of tanks. Nice. Everybody's got one. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> very versatile, uh, One very of the durable. most produced tanks in the world, correct? Yeah, I think it's like second to the T-54 wow. as far as how mass produced very it cool. was. Very Especially cool. for a post-war, post-World War II tank. It was very widely produced. Yeah. And it's a pretty solid tank, right? Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, it's a crew of three. They removed one of the crew members by having an autoloader inside the ah. vehicle. And it also gives you a much lower profile when you remove another human from mm -hmm. inside. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, very squatty tank. Looks like someone just squished it down. Um, so it was developed in the 70s, 1971, and that forced the Americans to up their game on their right. patent model, their M48. That's kind of what forced their hand to make the M60 more, more armor, more firepower. Uh, that was the result of this. So that's, again, going back to the arms race sort of thing during yeah. the Cold War. So I did the T-72A and that's, I think, the second version of the T-72 that they made. And that's kind of like, like the 80s, mostly seen in the 80s. And so the history of the model, it was based off of the T-54, or I guess off the T-64. T-64 based off of the T-54. And they made a lot of upgrades to it. Um, different engine, different gun. It has a 125 millimeter smoothbore gun, sure. uh, which is something that they tried to retrofit on the T-62 and also the T-64 and then that sort of, they're like, well, let's just continue on, sure. make a continuation of that and sort of include all these upgrades into the, a new model. So that's how that sort of came about. Very, very cool. Um, and yeah. yeah, as far as other armaments, has a 7.62 millimeter coaxial gun mounted right next to the main gun. Yeah. And then of course the Dushka uh, as a secondary armament. And whenever there's a secondary armament outside of the tank, it's like a 50 caliber machine gun, right. or in this case, a 12.7 millimeter mm -hmm. gun. They always classify it as an anti-aircraft gun. Yep. And this of course just, it's it just paints this beautiful picture in my head. <laughs> what does this look like, especially modern or Cold War, when you're thinking of anti-aircraft, it's mostly jet fighters at that point. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm imagining some Russian <laughs> crew member just jumping out of the tank and mounting on the douche gun, just trying to shoot down a jet fighter. <laughs> yeah. And very, I, I, uh, I only have to assume that it's very successful. <laughs> it's just 100% kill ratio right there. Yeah. Um, so. Kill ratio, 100%. That's not 100% ratio. Percent ratio. That's how good of a kill death ratio it is. It's 100%. Yeah. Um, so this model, uh, we've had T-72s in the past. Dan's made a T-72. Um, last year I made the T-90 yeah. tank model, and that Any, was uh, an upgraded T-72, sort of. Sure. Any so, similar build techniques with that? Yeah, similar yeah. build techniques. I did studs forward hull again, so it's smooth on the bottom. Very cool. And you get an accurate wheel placement, only for me to realize that, well, the accurate wheel placement, <laughs> I didn't need to do the studs forward. It would have lined up studs up. Ah. But, um, 
It looks cool. It, it looks cool and it's still strong and it's cost effective to yeah. do, doing it that way. Um, and sturdy. I included a rocking suspension, nice. which is similar to what Dan's done in the past with his EZ8 model or mm -hmm. what uh, Andrew Summers did in his uh, Chieftain. Yeah, it's kind of got that rocking suspension, and Dan's, I think like the Tiger has that s similar thing. They're just overlapping, but it's a really simple, strong way to make a strong suspension that's playable. Sure, looks cool in pictures when you're rolling over something, uh, especially in a squatty design. I haven't really implemented that yet, so that's something right. new that I, I um, implemented as opposed to the T90 yeah. that I did last year. And got side skirts on there, the rubberized side skirts, which I built in Lego. Of course. We talked about making it out of... Yeah, we were this close to making a, a really cool... Like old bicycle tires or something. Yeah, just cutting, cutting rubber and putting that in the kit. <laughs> it gar looks garbage sweet. bag brick or built, something. Though. Yeah, garbage bag. Been... And brick built uh, also, <laughs> it, it helps... Your kits are literally <laughs> garbage coated. <laughs> yeah. It helps uh, <laughs> keep the model strong, too. Yeah. It's always a structural component that I was like, oh, I'll just Lego build it. Um, keep it strong. Yeah. I went a little ham with the printing on this model. Ham, yeah. Let's. Uh, you might not notice this at first, but there is a ton of printing. It's kind of obscured by the turret. Yeah. But uh, it's there. So there's there's cargo boxes, tool boxes on on the left side of the tank. On the right side of the tank, there's um, fuel tanks, and of course external fuel tanks on the back as well. Not printed, but not printed. printing is on the right side. Yeah. You also have a hatch up top too, or in the front too, right? Yeah. The driver's hatch is right underneath the main gun. It's kind and of hard to see, but it's there. It's there. Yeah, a lot of cool. <laughs> it, it's it's subtle printing. It's not like over the top, but um, I think it really adds a lot of yeah. detail to it. It's a lot of nice detail. People ask constantly for more printed parts. This is it. So yeah. I went, went with oh, the yeah, red no, roll this prints. Is, this is a, some texture printed duffel bags. Um, you see these things decked out with all sorts of random gear on it too. So. Yeah. Cool. Brick Arms Dushka machine Very gun. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think you can only buy that in a pack otherwise. What? So you can get it in this tank model too. Um, also comes with one figure. So this is a, you know, it's it's a, we've seen this figure before. Um, sort of, or is it? Is it? It's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. It's a, from an earlier. Uh, I think it was in the IS three first. I think it debuted in the yeah, IS three. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, it's been a while, uh, but uh, you know, it's just a, it's a standard uh, black jumpsuit uh, over a, over a uniform. And, you know, these these tanks and their crew were from like, all over the world, and you'd see sort of some common uniform sharing ac across countries every once in a while. So it's just it's just a basic black jumpsuit. Sharing uniforms. Sharing uniform. Yeah, they'd share them. <laughs> well, you know, similar countries, uh, allies. They would trade gear and trade equipment. So you'd see yeah. the Soviets and their allies wearing a lot of the same equipment. I don't know if they'd actually be sharing the exact uniform. Like one crew leaves the tank yeah, and they like just take their clothes off and hand it to the next guy. And like get in the tank shelter. and in the jumpsuit. <laughs> That's exactly how it goes. Brick Warrior's helmet? Yeah. Brick Warrior's? Brick Warrior's. Yes, it is Brick Warrior. A Brick Warrior's helmet, um, just kind of that classic tanker helmet, that sort of padded little yeah. <laughs> smack your head into the ceiling. That's what it looks like. <laughs> um, yes. And yeah, that's that's. It's, a, it's a, a figure, it's a kit, some brick arms, a lot of printing. Figure. Yeah, we've got two hatches. We have the commander's hatch on the right side of the turret, and they always open forward, mm -hmm. so you have the armor plate if you're opening towards the enemy. Open towards the enemy. Right. <laughs> um, yep, so we got a hatch there for the commander, and then you have a hatch here for the gunner, because there is no loader. There we go. And you can also kind of remount the dushka from the back to the front. Just take off this, I think, it's, I think they call it a skeleton arm or something, uh -huh. when you fix skeleton arm. You can clip it on the front. And you can mount it there, very good. Up there too. So then it's still definitely anti-aircraft, huh? Definitely. Yeah, definitely anti-aircraft. Right? <laughs> definitely not used on soft targets. No. Well, it's disabling equipment. <laughs> yes. And, you know, they have a, an equipment, you know, guns. Yeah. <laughs> they got hurt just, in the process. I just anyway. aim for their guns. <laughs> um, that's how the Geneva Convention works. Um, yes, exactly. Cool. Okay, also, right. rolls what really else, well. Yeah, yeah, so nice. as far as having skirts built on, um, I've always struggled with that. Yeah. Having skirts on a tank and then having it roll with the skirts well. So it works. Very cool. All around pretty solid tank. Yeah. Pretty fun design. I think you guys really enjoy it. Yes. Like you said, it is a, a solid tank. It's a sturdy build. Yeah, just like the real thing. It is a solid tank, sturdy build, highly versatile. You see it in tons of battlefields and whatnot. Um, and it's highly playable, just like the real thing, right? It's the Communist Party tank, it's right? It's a party tank. 
<laughs> this is a party <laughs> tank, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, because it's, so it's a party tank. It's got keep going it's got T-shirt launchers. <laughs> it's got a searchlight spotlight. Yeah, it's like for, no, it's for a strobe, your laser light show. It's a strobe and then T-shirt um, cannons. T-shirt cannons. Oh, a poster. Uh, yeah, it's like a banner. Like it yeah. unrolls it's a, a banner. It's a cardboard tube that you insert posters into. So posters. It's, you're ready to go. Oh, helium tanks on the back. Yeah, helium tanks for balloons. <laughs> Fill up your balloons. Um, Bed rolls. In was this confetti? No, this is this the big T-shirt cannon. This is the big one. <laughs> Or it's like, <laughs> no. yeah. it's a fountain. It's like confetti. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. <clears throat> this is the party tank. Um, all right. That is the all new T72 designed by Cody OSL. For more information, please check out brickmania.com. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.